first thing I would say is to educate yourself before um, taking action. I think that's, you know, this is kind of the summary of my first uh, real estate purchase was kind of getting, you know, taking action without having the right education. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's the wrong thing because I've, I've learned a lot from it and that, uh, you know, the, um, that action became my education. Welcome to the Real Estate Mindset Podcast, hosted by Eric Nelson and brought to you by Wild Oak Capital. Eric is a real estate investor, business owner, and performance coach. Throughout this series, Eric explores the mindset behind why certain investors are so successful and how we can learn from their achievements and failures. Eric asks the tough questions around the habits, discipline, mindset, and more required to achieve the most ambitious goals. Thank you for being here and enjoy the show. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Real Estate Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Eric Nelson. Today, I have an amazing guest, super excited to, to pick his brain. Adrian Chukilongi, is that right? I'll let you yeah, say it. You got it right, man. That's okay. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks for being here. If you could, if you could kind of tell our audience about you, where you're from, and then what led you into real estate. No, absolutely. Thank you, Eric. Really excited to be here and to be on your show. So thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, my name is Adrian Chukilongi. Uh, I am married to my beautiful bride, Alexandra. We have a one-year-old son. Uh, and we also have our second one on the way. So we're excited and gearing up for that. Yeah, congrats. Um, you talked about that in the pre-show a little bit. But yeah. <laughs> we'll come back to that, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, we are currently stationed in Pensacola, Florida uh, for the Coast Guard. I am here for basic flight training and uh, should be here for about a year to a little bit over that. But uh, it'll just all depend on, uh, you know, the Navy's training and how that works. So um but yeah, I've been in the Coast Guard for four years now. I did um, two years <clears throat> on a Coast Guard cutter out of Key West, Florida. And then after that assignment, we flew across the country, uh, actually you know, outside of the continental U.S. to uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, where I was um, working there at a planning job in the enforcement office. Um, and then halfway through um, that assignment, we transitioned from the law enforcement side of the Coast Guard to aviation to switch up the, the career path a little bit. Um, but we're excited to kind of uh, have this new start as well. But um, yeah, real estate was actually um, a big factor in a lot of the movements from, from Hawaii to Pensacola, Florida and the shift from law enforcement to aviation within the Coast Guard. Um, and so we, uh, my wife and I, we had purchased um, our condo using uh, the VA loan in Hawaii uh, when we had arrived to that assignment there. Um, but a few months into that, uh, into that assignment, we realized uh, that we didn't know what we were doing in terms of real estate. And we looked for help in terms of like, okay, well, you know, once we PCS, what are we going to do, um, you know, with this, with this property? And so we reached out and got connected with active duty passive income. Um, which is um, a military um, member and veteran-led community that focuses on education um, and helping, you know, military members invest in real estate and, you know, take steps to achieve financial freedom. And so connecting with them just really opened my mindset, uh, you know, in my perspective on life and what is actually possible out there, especially as a military member, um, and so after doing more research, I realized that, uh, you know, this, this first uh, real estate purchase wasn't necessarily the best uh, investment, but uh, that was okay. I was like, let's, you know, let's keep moving forward. So I just kept learning and uh, networking and got involved with the uh, military multifamily mastermind and academy that they offer and as well as some coaching uh, from the coaches in there. And um, I was just, you know, taken back at, wow, like I could invest in, you know, big apartment buildings. Like I didn't even know that was a possibility before. Um, and so, you know, initially just trying to figure out what to do with this condo and how to manage it. I was like, whoa, like there's more to it than, than just, you know, 
this one property. And so, um, yeah, ended up joining the multifamily mastermind in October. And then soon after that, in December of 2020, invested uh, passively into um, a 72 unit apartment uh, syndication in Springdale, Arkansas. And so that was uh, a really cool, um, you know, first multifamily investment to be a part of just to, you know, be a fly on the wall and to see the process and how, how everything works. And, um, you know, was really drawn to um, the sponsor or the operator um, or the general partner who brought me into this deal. Um, I really was drawn to his approach in terms of, um, you know, investing in, in commercial real estate. And, you know, he was focused on raising capital. And I was like, I was really drawn to that because he was doing this from, from Columbia. Um, and I was like, dude, how are you like doing this from, from overseas? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so um, that just kind of inspired me to, I guess, focus on, you know, that one skill set within, uh, you know, multifamily real estate acquisitions, because, you know, there's so many, so many different skill sets that you can focus on, whether it's underwriting or uh, asset management or, um, you know, working with uh, getting financing or working with, you know, your brokers. So there's so many different pieces to the game. I was like, let's just start with one, you know? So um, that's kind of where I'm at right now in terms of uh, building, you know, building um, a business around uh, you know, my Coast Guard career and my family. And so, um, yeah, we're St. Joseph's Capital and we're um, investing in apartments and, and mobile home parks across the Southeast. Um, and, but also excited to share these kinds of opportunities with, um, you know, investors who want to invest passively and to receive, you know, quarterly distributions of cash flow and to, you know, all the tax advantages that um, real estate, especially um, multifamily real estate, um, you know, provides you. So uh, that's kind of, I guess, the quick and dirty, I kind of went off a tangent <laughs> there, but. Uh, no, 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 that's good. That's all good. <laughs> Well, there was a lot in there, right? So, I mean, I love doing this, kind of breaking it down, going backwards. So first off, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I've had a handful of military people on, on my show. And I think, you know, that nature of, of bouncing around, like kind of lends itself to start thinking about, well, I bought this house in Honolulu or Florida, or wherever it might be, or San Diego, you know, here are lots of people stationed there. And then they have to move and all of a sudden like, well, now I have a rental property, you know? So it's really cool that the military provides those services and there are people in the military to help you. So um, first thing I'll say is thanks for your service. I mean, what oh, you do is amazing. Honor. Yeah. Uh, thanks for, for doing that. It's honored that people like you are doing what you're doing. So um, thanks. Keep it up. Uh, but there's so much in what you said that I kind of want to break down. So um, first of all, you said like, you, know, you end up with this condo and, and I think it happens to a lot of people where they like buy another property. Like I need a rental and they buy a property. Like where I live, it's, it's similar kind of uh, financially to like California, for example, you buy a house here and you try and rent it. Chances are it doesn't cash flow. I'm not saying it can't work because there's some appreciation there, but uh, a lot of people do. And they're like, well, you know, and I did that, that. I made that same mistake. You know, like we bought a single family and I'm like, well, this doesn't really, this isn't really what I would repeat once I learned about it. Right. But at least right. what you said was learn from your, learn from it and then grow, you know, and maybe not even necessarily a mistake, but just something that you're like, okay, well, there's better opportunities out there. Um, so that was huge. And then the other thing you said was, you know, you it sounds like you're a limited partner in a deal. I believe that that's a really powerful way to learn, um, to learn the business. But what you said that stuck out to me was that you were drawn to the, to the sponsor. Um, so I talk about that a lot too, is like, you know, most people don't know this is an opportunity. Neither did I, sounds like neither did you. Part of the show is education, right? You can take your extra capital, invest with someone you know and trust. And exactly like you said, is there's great tax benefits. You know, you get a quarterly distribution, it's awesome. But the key is the sponsor, right? So I think a good analogy is like a, like a race car team. You have the best race car. You could have by, by far the fastest car, but if your driver 
sucks, <laughs> you're not going to win. <laughs> yeah. Or you could have a mediocre car and the best driver and chances are you're going to do pretty well. So it's kind of like that. I mean, if you have this asset that the, that the manager manages well and you know that they will, uh, then that's the person to park your money with, in my opinion. And then, you know, I, I kind of like diving into all this stuff. But the other thing you mentioned was like skills and partnerships, right? So like I found that exact thing to be true. Um, you know, you, you got to find yourself with partners that have complementary skills. Um, so you mentioned like uh, capital raising. So like sounds like this guy's doing this from Columbia, which that is amazing. And what, what's cool about Zoom is you can kind of, uh, get to know someone from anywhere, but it's super true. You got to align yourself with someone who has uh, skills that complement yours. So, um, so I'll kind of dive into a handful of questions. First of all, congrats on the uh, on the second on the way. We talked yeah, about the pre-show. I, I have two boys. Sounds like you're gonna have two boys. Uh, what an incredible journey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a blast. He's our one-year-old is just started running around. So it's, it's been tough to keep up with him, but it keeps me in shape for sure. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I have a similar situation that, uh, yeah, my four-year-old's just, he's, you know, he's a talker and he's all over the place. It's super fun. And then our youngest is similar, like he's beginning to chat and run. So we're, we're in for it for sure. So I guess I'll just move on to St. Joseph's capital. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Where you guys are looking, where you're investing, you said multifamily and, uh, mobile home parks. Do you have any investments yet or you're, you're kind of headed for your first acquisition or where are you now? Yeah. So we're, we're headed for our first acquisition. Um, we're just really preparing um, and trying to implement the proper systems um, and, you know, in place so that way um, we can create something sustainable um, as we move forward, you know, for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, so uh, right now we have a, significant deal flow and we are focused on uh, B and C class uh, multifamily properties um, primarily in Florida but op also open to other states like Alabama North Carolina um, and a few others um, but we're just excited to get started we're uh, excited to um, partner up with some uh, experienced syndicators and investors uh, operators who have teams in place um, that are already providing, um, you know, their investors with, um, you know, double digit returns that uh, are helping their investors, you know, take their next step um, in terms of, you know, what their financial freedom is and what that looks like for them and their families, as well as um, even further down the line in terms of generational wealth. So uh, we're excited to get going and um, I'm excited for you too, because I know, I know your, your business is, is gearing up uh, for, for acquisitions in the near future. So, uh, yeah, I'm just excited for the both of us and our businesses and where, you know, um, where we're, where we're headed. So it's an exciting time. <laughs> oh yeah. Super excited. And we're, we're kind of in a similar position. We, um, can't really talk too much about it. We do have one acquisition in play. Um, you know, again, can't say a whole lot at this point until we're a little further along, but yeah, it's this yeah. really exciting time where like deal flows finally, full speed. I mean, it's almost like we can't keep up with, with underwriting, you know, and so we have a, a partner that we brought on to help us with underwriting. Um, awesome. And then my other, uh, other friend I'm working with, his name's John. He's like, he's out in front he's like incredible with people. And so he's got the broker relationship going. Um, and I think my, my key will be asset management. So kind of like I described, nice. like hopefully that's my role is to take the business plan, you know, through the end Cause that's really the key. I mean, I think that's actually not talked about enough. Like if you mm -hmm. go to like a coaching seminar or, you know, uh, hire someone, they talk about the acquisition so much, but uh, there's only a handful of people out there in my opinion, really talking about asset management. Mm -hmm. And that's really yeah. the key. Cause like truthfully, it takes a ton of work to purchase a property, but I think really the, the work is in the, the delivery you know, you have this plan and it's not just going to play itself out. <laughs> you gotta, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, your business plan is, you know, the core foundation of the investment and the execution of that. And so I think you're spot on with how crucial and critical that role is. Yeah. So another question that I want to talk about with you is, uh, you know, I know you had, you have like a heart for, for supporting missionaries. Um, can you just, Absolutely. Yes. So, oh, I think, yeah, I, uh, second. yeah, no worries. Let me, uh, we'll edit this part out. Yeah. I think my, let me test it. That's okay. 
Check, check. Okay. <laughs> Loud and clear. Help me. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. So my microphone just got unplugged. So, um, anyway, yeah, so no I know you have, a, you have a, we'll kind of cut that whole section. So you have a heart, heart for missions. Um, so can you tell us about that, where that came from? Uh, I know we talked about a little bit in the pre-show, but help our listeners understand what you guys want to do with some of your profits and, and where that came from. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess even before I say that, I just want to say, you know, thank you for, you know, what you guys are, you and your business is doing too with, uh, you know, supporting. Um, I think you said it was a youth, youth of the mission. Um, and so that's, you know, really exciting to uh, be able to get back in that way. Um, you know, for, for us, we, um, I guess to get on a personal note, when I was uh, a cadet or student at the uh, Coast Guard Academy, one of the big, um, influences that I was blessed to um, be, you know, be impacted by was the presence of Focus missionaries uh, on the campus of the Coast Guard Academy. And so Focus is the fellowship of Catholic university students, and they have missionaries um, sent on mission um, to college campuses around the country. And now they're expanding into Europe and um, a couple other places around the world but they, they help students walk um, in the faith. They lead them in uh, Bible studies, um, lead, on, lead them in uh, mission trips uh, to different countries around the world, um, just to uh, you know, understand what it means to, you know, to live for Christ, to be a man or a woman, uh, and what that means you know, in the world uh, you know, as they move on from college to the real world, whether it's a job or the military or you know, whatever vocation they may be called to. And so there's definitely a special place in, in my wife and in my, my wife and my heart uh, for focus missionaries. And so um, what we're doing with uh, the profits that we're making from our multifamily investing or multifamily investments is giving uh, and supporting focus missionaries um, uh, financially. So uh, we're super excited about that and pumped to be able to, uh, you know, serve the church in that way and to serve in advance, you know, the gospel in that way. So, um, yeah, thanks for asking that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, so, you know, this is kind of my perspective is, is money is, is just a means to an end or a tool, right? So, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go way off topic here for a second, but yesterday oh, good, I was man. watching <laughs> Aladdin with my four-year-old son and, I hadn't seen the new ones with Will Smith or whatever. So when he, when he like comes out of the, the lamp, he's like, people always wish for money and power. And, you know, he's, he's being funny, but he's like, don't go down that path because there's not enough money and not enough power in the world to, to lead you to happiness. And it was mm -hmm. like, you know, it was like playful kids movie, but it hit me pretty hard. I was like, <laughs> that's, that's what I've been saying. Like, you know, everyone wants a little bit more money, but really, really, in my opinion, if you have the view of the money as a tool, for what you mm. want to do with it, um, that's a more powerful driver. And so you yeah. might, you, you're more likely to actually get more of it if you have the reason why you want to have more, you know? So like, yeah. uh, truthfully, I don't necessarily, I'm not driven by money as much as I'm driven by time. So yeah. I want more time with my family, uh, you know, more freedom of time, financial freedom, whatever you want to call it. And that really drives me to have passive income, you know? So uh, I don't want the stack of cash necessarily, but I also want to give back, like you said. So that's why I keyed on that from, from your bio. And that's why we talked in the pre-show is like to have, uh, you know, a heart behind some of your profits to help someone that you believe in and something that uh, is part of your heart to me is, is incredible. And, and I'll say I, I would bet money or I, I'd bet time <laughs> that, <laughs> that you'll be more successful because you have, you know, that kind of driver. So yeah. Um, very, very cool. So I'm, I'm excited for you, man. I, a similar situation, like, you know, early on, it's a ton of work. It's a ton of, uh, networking. It's all that stuff to get where you are. So, uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll get an acquisition soon and, and we, yeah, we're in a similar position. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, definitely. Eric. So, uh, second part of the show is, is really focused on mindset. And so I'm just going to ask kind of a series of questions, really not a right answer, really not a wrong answer, just kind of like, uh, feel free to, to elaborate too on, on as much as you want. So the first question I always ask is, do you have a morning routine? Yes, that's a great question. Um, 
and yes, I do have a morning routine. It uh, it fluctuates, but um, you know, depending on you know the need of the, of my wife and my my son at the time. But uh, it's it's been becoming more solid um, as of lately. But yes, so there's there is a morning routine for sure, and um, that really has solidified more into effect because of. Um, you know, the, the driving force and direction of, you know, of the why and the reason that we're, we're doing real estate investing and why we're, um, you know, on the, on the trajectory, um, you know, toward, toward helping and serving people, um, you know, create a stream of passive income. And so, uh, yes, there is a morning routine for sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, not to get like too personal not to get into it, but what, what is roughly your morning routine? You don't have to share everything, but like, Let's say what, what works for you? Like what's helpful to start your day? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say my morning routine actually starts the night before. Um, I like it. <laughs> because, because uh, you know, we, we're trying to navigate our son's sleep schedule and, you know, God bless my wife. She's been amazing with getting him on this routine and really getting him some amazing sleep. Uh, and I try to help out when I can. And, uh, but he, you know, he goes to bed at, 8 p.m. and I am you know I'm right to bed pretty much like right after we get him his bath and down to bed so I usually go to bed at 8 30 um, because I know that if I go to bed you know at that time then I can get up at 4 a.m. Um, and so so I'm up by 4 a.m. I'll uh, get out of bed uh, you know drink some water uh, say about 10 minutes of prayer and, and gratitude and just, you know, thanking the man upstairs for, you know, uh, an amazing life and another day to, to breathe. And um, that usually just kind of, you know, brings me back to a point of, uh, you know, just kind of peace, I guess, if you will. And, uh, and then from there, I try to use the next hour and a half uh, from 4.30 to, to 6 a.m. to focus on just, I guess, getting the hardest thing done um, from the day. Um, and that's been helpful in terms of being able to, you know, move forward in the day with confidence, like, okay, you know, I got the hardest thing done first and now what else, what else is going to, you know, be in my way for the day. And it's like, that's definitely been helpful for sure in terms of, um, being able to knock, knock things off the list, um, just starting with that, with that first hardest thing. Um, and usually that, that thing will, that hardest thing, uh, is usually, um, you know, putting pen to paper and like uh, allowing my like my mind to either write uh, a blog or uh, you know write a chapter in the ebook that we've been working on. So, um, but it can vary, you know, depending on on what's on you know the the project list for the month or so. But um, and then that also um, you know translates into the rest of the day because um, you know once once I get home from work around four p.m. or so, like I can. Um, you know, I can be fully present with my family uh, and kind of turn the brain off for a little while and, uh, you know, just enjoy time with the wife and, and run around the house with Logan or dribbling the basketball outside with him. So, uh, yeah, I think the morning routine is definitely crucial for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty hardcore. 4 a.m. is pretty early for most people. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, like a couple of things is, like getting the first, the, the hard thing done first. And even let's, let's back up even before that is like spending time in prayer. Um, you know, if you, whatever your belief is, it's in my opinion, prayer, meditation, uh, thoughtfulness, gratitude, those things are incredibly powerful. Um, so to have that gratitude and set your mind right and kind of your soul or, you know, your inside right kind of for the day is, is incredibly powerful. So that's such a cool way to start your day and get your head right. Um, yeah. And be, be grateful for what you have. It's just, I'm, I love it. And then to get the first thing, hard thing done is, is awesome. I mean, that's such a good tip because, you know, lots of people have a tendency to be like, hey, put it off, put it off, put it <laughs> off. And then it never really gets done or it's hard. And one thing I've been saying lately, like to myself, like one of my sort of mantras is like, take one step towards your goal every day, mm -hmm. um, even if it's small. And so it kind of aligns with what you're saying is like, take one step towards uh, your future kind of, even if it's the hardest thing. So 
very, very cool. And I do the same. I get up early, not at four. I mean, I, I don't think I could possibly get up before <laughs> I'm being honest, but <laughs> I get up early before everybody. Um, and, and it's, I think it's good to like get some, uh, quiet time or, you know, I asked that question cause it, it works, whatever works for you. Right. And everyone's answer is different, yeah. but, uh, the point is if you have some time alone, uh, before the family, especially, especially with the kids, to me, it's, it's, uh, so valuable. And I cherish that time for sure. Cause then you're kind of ready and you're set for, to be the best version of you, best father, you know, best husband, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So, yeah, um, very cool. So the next uh, question is what books are you reading or what books can you recommend? And where do I start? <laughs> um, I would say, I guess the book that I'm reading right now is uh, Raising Capital for Real Estate. Um, is that about Hunter, Hunter Thompson? Okay. Hunter Thompson, yeah. Uh -huh. So that's, that's the real estate book that I'm reading. And it's definitely been helpful um, in kind of being a, a playbook for um, taking action um, for, for what we're focused on in, in the multifamily space. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, one of my favorite books that probably one of the first books that gave me a love for reading is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And uh, that's, that's kind of the way I, I see life, uh, you know, is that, is that journey that we're all on. And, you know, we're all, we're all looking for something. And, um, you know, I think that, that question, you know, what, what are you looking for is kind of a central theme that uh, I just come back to. And I, I feel like it you know, just translates to, you know, our faith journeys, our, our marriages, our, you know, our, our life in work, in our jobs and, and, and our kids and everything that we do. It's like, um, but yeah, definitely a high, highly recommend uh, The Alchemist. This is so interesting because I'm, I'm actually like currently reading Hunter Thompson's book right now. It's hilarious. And then Alchemist is probably my all-time favorite book. My wife makes oh, very cool. me for it. So <laughs> we have a we have a serious connection there. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I love, love it, that book. Uh, I, awesome. I find it to be the same, and it's weird because like I've read it probably five times now, and and it like means something completely different in the stage of life that I'm at. Uh, so I, yeah, I recommend it as well. If you haven't been back to it in a while, try it now because it'll it'll probably mean something different. That's how it is for me anyway. So love yeah. love those recommendations. Uh, cool. Awesome. So uh, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but the question I ask is, have you had a coach or a mentor in the past? And was it, if you, if you had to pay for it, was it worth the investment? Yes. And yes. So I, I have had a coach right now um, who is several years um, and millions of dollars of assets uh, ahead of me, um, you know, in this space. And it's, it's definitely been extremely helpful be, because, you know, he's, he's kind of been that guiding voice um, and someone to just bounce ideas off of. Um, and so, um, you know, having someone to, you know, help you in that way, um, especially when you're trying to, you know, run a business or, um, you know, invest in, in, you know, big, big deals. It's like, there's so much that, um, there's so much that you don't know. Um, when you, when you're just getting started. And so being able to kind of iron that out um, with someone who's been there, uh, not only, you know, helps you in confidence, but also, uh, you know, it's helped me a lot to reduce some risk in terms of, you know, the way forward, um, you know, to maybe proceed <clears throat> or to, to proceed or not to proceed on certain, certain deals or properties. Um, and so, uh, I would say, yeah, it's definitely, definitely been worth it and um, highly recommend, you know, for anyone getting started in, in real estate or anything in life, really, you know, if you have a mentor or a coach or someone to just to look up to or even model, um, you know, it's, it's definitely helpful because <laughs> especially me, I'm human and I make mistakes and uh, I know that there, there's plenty of room for growth and, you know, having, having someone, even a friend to, to offer advice uh on maybe something that you're not seeing so but uh yeah a coach or a mentor is something that can definitely give you that and it's extremely valuable um when we're talking about real estate investing yeah i, I agree I and mean, i say this a lot so you know i ask this question on each show right so it comes up but uh for me a big piece of the coaching is to know that someone else has done what you're trying to do 
So I love what you said about like, he's, he's many steps ahead of you, which is a great coach for your situation, in my opinion. Right. So like you can actually say, Hey, here's where I am. And he could say, I've been there. Here's the hurdles you might encounter. Uh, and here's how I got past them. Or, you know, you might find yourself with something like, well, I don't know how to do this. Um, you know, cause it's interesting. Like sometimes it's a big picture thing. And then sometimes it gets down to nitty gritty. And to me, the questions always come in like the really detailed things that you wouldn't think of. Uh, and so to have that coach just say, Hey, like, how is the best way to do this? Or what's the best, I mean, SEC regulations, for example, I mean, if you're doing a 506 B raise, I don't want to get too far in the weeds here, but it's pretty regulated. And so you have to be careful. So to just be able to text, call, email that person and say, Hey, can I do this? Or can I talk to X investor about this deal? Um, that's kind of the nuts and bolts and nitty gritty. Right. And that's just one example. So, uh, I love, I love that you found someone who's doing something that you want to do. So that that's such a cool coach to have. Uh, yeah. So the next question is what's something that you've done that you would not repeat that we can uh, learn from. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, where do I start now? <laughs> um, I would say, you know, the first thing I would say is to educate yourself before um, taking action. I think that's, you know, this is kind of the summary of my first uh, real estate purchase was kind of getting, you know, taking action without having the right education. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's the wrong thing because I've, I've learned a lot from it and that, uh, you know, the, um, that action was, became my education. Um, but there, you know, there are ways to educate yourself without, you know, losing money or, uh, without taking the wrong action. So I would say just, you know, education comes first. Um, and that would be my recommendation for, you know, anyone new getting started, um, in real estate is, is that, uh, you know, you can educate yourself first before taking that action and not having to, to, you know, make the mistakes other investors may make. And um, you, know, you can kind of avoid some, some traps and pitfalls by really just investing into your education first. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I will say with the caveat of like, don't get stuck on education, you know? Absolutely, so like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Grant Cardone, right? He's, I mean, he's famous. He's uh, excellent at what he does in, in several ways. Um, and one of his kind of things, like, especially in his book is like, take action and kind of figure it out later. And yeah. uh, I take a little bit of like caution <laughs> with that. I think his heart, and I don't, I don't want to say, speak for him right but i think the the point he's trying to make is lots of people never actually take the action so yeah. he's kind of like go like get moving get moving move forward right yeah but um that needs to be balanced too so i will say like the caveat of don't get stuck in it but i completely agree is like education without question number one and the other thing that you mentioned is like uh, learning from a mistake. So again, I, I first few properties I bought, I probably wouldn't necessarily repeat them. I learned a lot. We actually made some money. Um, so, you know, blessed in that way, but it was our own money, you know, like if I would have lost it, I would have felt bad or annoyed, but if I'm investing someone else's money, I'm going to be 10 times more diligent. So I would also say like, you know, if you're going to do a syndication or if you're going to team up with somebody and it's not just your own money, that's when education is, is beyond important. You absolutely need to know what you're doing. So yeah, I love that. I didn't mean to like jump all over that, but I just wanted to say like, <laughs> don't get stuck without, you know, take action too, but I love the, love the education tip. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. I think action is key because education is if it just sits in our brains and we don't do anything about it, then it really is just a waste. So the, the combination for sure is, is critical. <laughs> I love it. Cool. Um, so next one is what mindset tip can you share with someone who start now or just you can share with someone who can kind of push them forward? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think for me, uh, I'm naturally an introvert and uh, a quiet reserve person. Um, and so one thing that I'm still working on is is confidence and, um, you know, having, um, a charismatic approach, um, to, to everything. And so I would just say that, 
um, when you're just getting started, there's almost a blessing of, of not knowing too much because you bring a new perspective in um, that's kind of un, I don't know, maybe not jaded or, and so there's, there's a lot of value that a new perspective comes in. And so if you come in with confidence and, um, you know, um, charisma, if you can learn how to create that within yourself, I think bringing those two things to, you know, anything you're doing is going to just, um, create a ton of momentum in terms of your own mindset, but as well as, um, you know, progress that you make. Um, so I would say those are my two, two mindset nuggets is just find a way to foster confidence and charisma in, in your approach to your business or approach to real estate investing, because, um, people are going to be attracted to that and definitely something I'm still working on and I'm sure I'll be working on for a while, but, uh, I think those are just such critical components to, um, building relationships to, um, you know, growing a business to, um, creating partnerships. So yeah, that's, that's what I got for you. <laughs> I like it. No, I think one thing you said in there that, that really was awesome was, uh, to have a fresh perspective and not necessarily, uh, be self-conscious conscious about it, you know, like it's okay to be new. Everyone was once new. And I love how you're saying like, it's non-influenced kind of like, it's not jaded, you're new and you might have a new perspective. And so like, come at it with that angle. I love that tip. I've never heard that before. It's awesome. It, uh, my coach will say sometimes like, you don't necessarily have to have the practice to be an expert. Mm. Um, so, you know, like when I was starting this really podcast, good. there's this kind of like imposter syndrome, I guess that, you know, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. who am I to talk about multifamily when I'd actually own any large apartment buildings? Um, but, you know, I've spent a year plus educating myself. I know quite a bit about the space, confident in it. And he was like, you know what, go for it. Because you're interviewing people who have, you know, knowledge too and, and a story to tell. And it's okay to be an expert without that experience. And he's like, you know, so, you know, I guess that was one piece of actually diving into this too. Is like, oh, that's actually cool. Like, even if I'm not an expert in a particular subject, because I'm never going to be an attorney. I'm never going to be a CPA, right? Uh, you can have those people on your show and then also know enough about that, know as much as I need to know to be a quote unquote thought leader in the space. So I uh, love that tip. Um, awesome. So hopefully, hopefully some of the listeners can even like grab onto that a little bit. So thanks for sharing. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so these one, th this one's to me are the hardest questions, but uh, I love it a lot. So what is your definition of success? Mm, I really like this question. There's so many definitions out there. Um, I think one that's been sitting with me for the last probably year or so in terms of success is, and I get this, I'll quote my, my mentor on this or my coach. And he says that sex, success is the, the quality of your relationships. Um, uh, and I just think that's so true because, you know, if we define it by, you know, our bank account statements or, you know, maybe, um, the amount of power or, or reputation or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that, you know, we're, we're looking for, like, you know, that, that leaves room for vulnerability, vulnerabilities in our relationships. And so I think, I think it's so, so true, you know, like our relationship with, uh, with God, our relationship with our, our spouses, our relationship with, with our kids. Um, and what's, what's, what are those, you know, how are the, how are those relationships doing? And, and it kind of keeps everything into perspective, uh, you know, at least for me as, you know, to, to help me not to be so, um, so focused on one thing that I forget about the other things. And so, yeah, I think, I think that is a, a simple definition that is, has helped me to, to view, um, you know, the way forward over the last year is, is that success is the quality of relationships. So, oh man, that is so good. I've never heard <laughs> like that exact description, but that's incredible. So, you know, if you're listening, go back 20 seconds and listen again. I mean, that, that was so good. So Adrian, thanks for sharing. Uh, one thing I will, will add on to that too is uh, Brennan Burchard is, is someone that I really look up to. I love his book, High Performance Habits. I know he has several books, but that particular one sticks out to me. And one thing that he says in that book is uh, there's like a doorway 
I'm, I'm going to botch this, but basically he's saying every time you walk through a doorway into a group of people or into if a room with someone else in it, as you pass through the door, say to yourself, how can I one serve this room? And two, how can mm. I be like the best version of myself? Mm. Uh, and that's so hard to do, right? I mean, we're all human. It's like, it's so hard to do, but uh, it's kind of similar to what you're describing is like, be the best version of yourself. And what will come from that is uh, powerful, strong relationships. And I, I love that definition of success. So thanks for sharing. This next one's a little bit harder is if someone were to ask you, why are you successful and others not so much? What is your, uh, what's your response? <laughs> that's a tough one. Oh man. Um, why am I successful? Shoot. Um, <laughs> I would, I would say that, uh, I'd have to give a lot of credit to my wife for sure. She is amazing. She's, uh, she's an amazing wife. She's an amazing mother, uh, an amazing friend. Um, you know, she's been super supportive of, you know, all the crazy things I'm doing with real estate and she doesn't have to be, she's been, uh, so willing to, be a part of this military coast guard journey uh, you know where we're not close to family uh often um and she's just been uh she's just been there by my side and i can't i can't thank her enough for all that she is doing all that she's done and so i would say that she has definitely uh contributed abundantly to uh where we are where we're going and um, yeah, I am so blessed to, to have her by my side for sure. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah. Now, if you, uh, there's no way that any of us can go, can go alone. Right. So if you have like that person by your side, so I love like giving her the, giving her the shout out. She'll have to listen to the show now. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm always bugging my wife to listen and it's a lot, right. And she's got a lot going on, but I'll uh, force her to listen to the show because my wife's amazing too. There, I said it, I said it Marie, <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> no, that's cool though. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you like can recognize that because um, you're uh, a lot of people can't, right? So it's cool that you can take a step back and say, wow, it's not about me. It's not about what I'm doing. Uh, it's about us. And I couldn't do it alone. So, so very cool. Um, Adrian, this has been an awesome show. Thank you for your time. Thanks for, for sharing all your stuff. The final thing is, how can people find out more about you? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, thanks. And thanks again, Eric. This has been awesome. I love being on your show and it's been super fun. Uh, yeah, for your listeners, if they are interested in connecting, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, Adrian Chukwiangi is my name and just search my name and uh, you'll find me. <laughs> um, and then also you can... Uh, also connect with us at stjosephscapital.com. That's S-T-J-O-S-E-P-H-S-C-A-P-I-T-A-L.com. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, you know, to connect with, um, you know, your audience. And um, it's definitely been awesome being able to connect with you on, on this show. So I just want to, you know, express my gratitude and appreciation for you uh, for me the opportunity to be on it. Yeah, no, thanks again, man. What a good show. Appreciate your time. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, listeners, great show again. Uh, um, this is kind of a post show. This is the first time I've done this. Uh, I wanted to kind of record a little bit of housekeeping things. First of all, if you're listening to iTunes, Spotify, please give me a review. Please tell your friends. I want to reach as many people as I can. Um, and that's the best way to do it, right? So people can hear that the, that, I'm actually hopefully making an impact and, and giving some education. Another thing is I'll be speaking at a conference in Florida uh, in November, the Multifamily Masters Con. So multifamilymasterscon.com. Um, and there'll be a discount code. So please uh, keep on the lookout for that. And hopefully some listeners can come join me there. Thank you so much for listening. Welcome to the Real Estate Mindset Podcast, hosted by Eric Nelson and brought to you by Wild Oak Capital. Eric is a real estate investor, business owner, and performance coach. Throughout this series, Eric explores the mindset behind why certain investors are so successful and how we can learn from their achievements and failures. Eric asks the tough questions around the habits, discipline, mindset, and more required to achieve the most ambitious goals. Thank you for being here and enjoy the show.